All right, man, peace. So Chris Bosh, as many of you brothers who've been following the NBA for a certain period of time know, is one of the more underrated performers in professional basketball over the past 15 or so years. He will be going to the Hall of Fame, contrary to what many people may understand. But one of the main reasons why Chris Bosh is so underrated is because the narrative on LeBron James is that he hasn't had enough help over his career. So it's very important that Chris Bosh gets detracted, but he's an eight, nine time all-star, two time world champion. He will be going to the Hall of Fame. And I say all that to say this. Chris Bosh, LeBron's former teammate on the Miami Heat, who made four finals appearances and were able to be successful in two world championship endeavors, was asked his opinion about whether or not LeBron James is this season's regular season MVP as opposed to James Harden. And he's going to tell you what he actually thinks. So anyway, they're going to talk about it. I'm going to chime in. LeBron James is not the MVP this year. That's not me talking. It's his ex-teammate, Chris Bosh. Welcome back to TNG Sports. Van here with Michael Jr. Varsity Babcock. Mike, what's up, brother? Oh, what's up, Van? Not true. Varsity. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing uh, quarterback. The yeah, MVP what are you talking about, race uh, for this year is heating up. Now, some guys have fallen off of a cliff due to injury. Yeah. But most people are saying it's either between LeBron yeah. and James Harden. A lot of people. At this point, everyone knows that the MVP race will come down to James Harden and James Harden. It's not going to be James Harden and LeBron James, but what LeBron will do is he will take some, he will take some first place votes away from James Harden. That will be about it. James will not be a unanimous MVP. And to be quite frank with you, he doesn't really deserve to be a unanimous MVP. He's missed too many games. LeBron does deserve a few first place votes. It shouldn't be close, but he does deserve a few first place votes. If for nothing else, the way in which he's been able to dominate offensively for the duration of this season. This may be the best offensive season I've ever seen LeBron have. For whatever reason, he's had an offensive renaissance this year. Because he really has not performed this well on offense since his phenomenal 2012-2013 season. He was, he was great last year. The year before that, he was great. I mean, LeBron has been great for his whole career, but this season... He really took it up to another level, and I give him credit for that, uh, despite the fact that he most likely had a series of, <laughs> of performance-enhancing improvements, quote-unquote, that aided him in his climb. It is what it is. But once again, in regards to Mr. Chris Bosh, please listen to what Chris Bosh has to say, because he is a great player. He's not someone just talking. He's not a quote-unquote hater, as many people allege anyone to be when they say this truth about LeBron James. And there's no need for anyone to truly want to detract from LeBron. He's had great accomplishments in his career. I'm on record as stating this, and I state this incessantly. On my list, he's a top 10 all-time great player. I have him currently at number six. Number six with a bullet, by the way. If he were able to win a championship this year, I will put him at number five over Larry Bird. And there'll be some question as to whether or not I would have to put him over Magic Johnson. But as of right now, I have him at number six. So we'll see what happens in the playoffs this year. The NBA may have some skullduggery afoot to uh, put that little bow on LeBron James's Cleveland tenure. We'll see. A lot of people think it's a two-man race between those two guys. Um, we got Chris... Now look at my man James Harden, a.k.a. James Hardhead. We see that he wears number 13. I tell you brothers this all the time. Many of these top level NBA players are monarch athletes. And oftentimes it's encoded in the numbers that they're given or that they choose. Number 13 once again represents chaos. It represents anarchy. That's why it's viewed as a quote unquote unlucky number. On the left hand side it's viewed as the number of a witch coven. It's also the number to signify Metatron's cube. What emerged out of the cube or out of the box, a.k.a. Pandora's box, Chaos did. That's why you'll see players like Odell Beckham wear number 13. I stated this from last season when I saw James Harden switch off in that playoff series against San Antonio. I said, you know what? This guy here, he's, he's down with the program in more ways than one. There was no way to explain how he disappeared like that. And we've seen that from quite a few players over the over the past 
10 plus years whether it be Kobe Bryant's mysterious disappearance in Game 7 against the Phoenix Suns, Steph Curry's mysterious disappearance in Game 3 against the Cleveland Cavaliers in the 2016 Finals, James Harden last year. We've seen it before. Oh, of course, how could I forget LeBron James in the 2011 Finals? Many of these top-level players are maturing candidates, quite as kept. And the same way that they can be switched off, they can be ratcheted up. Like a remote control doll, man. Like a drone. They can be ratcheted up. Like, for example, LeBron James in Game 6 against the Boston Celtics in 2012. Whoever was controlling his keys, they turned him all the way up. Because I've never seen a performance like that. And everyone still remarks to this day about the look on his face. He looked like he was in another dimension in that game. LeBron James did. Here's Bosch out. I don't know if you remember Babcock. He used to play alongside LeBron James. Yeah, I think I remember them winning two championships together yeah. and being something like best friends also. Right, so we asked him, a member of the big three. In I don't think that they were best friends. I just think that Chris Bosch was a teammate of LeBron. And LeBron loves to ingratiate his teammates with that fake family atmosphere. I'm not saying that LeBron is necessarily a phony per se. I just think that he's someone who loves to create... A very familial atmosphere on the teams that he plays on because it makes him feel comfortable I think that he missed out on the family atmosphere in his youth because he was an only child at least allegedly he was an only child and for the most part he spent most of his life trying to cultivate his basketball skill so I, in my view that's the reason why every team that he goes on he tries to create this quote unquote family atmosphere it's very important for him for his own psychological succor in Miami, who he thought was the MVP, check out what he said. With the Raptors issue for a playoff push, would you be game ready right now to take that? Uh, game ready? Yeah, I'm saying. Like, do you, you know, are, are you ready to get back in the game? Yeah, man. No, bro. Would you? Chris Bosch is still trying to play in the NBA. I really hope that he sits his ass down. Because that's what he needs to do. He needs to sit his ass down and stay out of the NBA He's made enough money. Hopefully he's made enough money to last for the rest of his life. He, he's an extremely intelligent dude, from what I understand. He's, he's into things like information technology and um, other fields that one would consider scholastic. He doesn't need to be in the NBA. I cast him in that same lot as players like Ray Allen, etc. People who are uh, intrepid in a lot of their mental endeavors, and they don't particularly need to want to submerge himself in that meathead culture. He's better than that. You made your money, move on. Would you, would you sign up with him right now, Domenico, for the playoffs? For the East, right? Yeah. Hey, look, LeBron is taking some slack for calling himself the MVP. Is it him or is it James Harden? James Harden. Oh! You know, <laughs> you know the brother Chris Bosh was serious because he gave that, he gave that <laughs> T-Rex look. He looked back at the camera like he was a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Is it hard in this year? <laughs> oh, man. That dude, Chris Bosch, is hilarious, man. Man, look like a damn Brachiosaurus. <laughs> wow. Wow. It's hard. That blows me away. Here. So, listen, we have a uh, side by side comparison that uh, our intrepid notes guy, Gordon, made for us. Once again, just look at James Harden, number 13. I made a video about this a while ago. There's a reason why Chris Paul wanted to go to the Houston Rockets. Uh, he did a feature on ESPN. It was a little three-part feature, but a lot was revealed in that feature. They showed how his wife has the inverted pentagram tatted on the back of her left shoulder, I believe. I'm sure that she'll say that it's because she's an Eastern star. And it most likely is because she's an Eastern star. But I have little doubt that both he and her are venerators of the Baphomet. Because that little clique that they have, LeBron and, and uh, Carmelo Anthony and D. Wade, Chris Paul, they're all wife swappers, man. They, they all are in quote-unquote open marriages. All of them. Or at least Carmelo was. But sometimes marriages can be too open <laughs> and it gives one of the two people that are in that quote unquote open marriage an excuse to leave if they feel like leaving. 
And that's what happened with Lala Anthony. She had no problem with Carmelo sleeping with whoever he wanted to, as long as he did what she wanted him to do in regards to the location in which he, he chose to play to help her with her whack ass acting career. But they had a photo one time with Chris Paul taking LeBron James's wife out to dinner. I believe it may have been on TMZ. And I stated at the time that the reason why he was doing that in my view was because they engage in wife swapping. Just my opinion. Everything I'm saying is alleged. Everything I'm saying is alleged. But all you have to do is look at their wives and just the demeanor on their countenance. For example, you have D. Wade with that demon, Gabrielle Union, that pansexual who loves to run around trying to exalt, getting her asshole eaten out and how she talks about how she eats his asshole. There's a lot of <laughs> crazy stuff that goes on with them too. And one of the gateways for pansexuality is ass worship, or as it's known, osculum infame. Okay? I have little, little doubt about that. So, there may, be a re there may have been a reason why you saw those guys on that banana boat. That may, that may have been telling you a lot more than you bargained for. Also, Chris Paul with the State Farm commercials. He had a State Farm commercial where basically it was conveying to the viewer that he was under mirror programming. He even did the symbol for as above, so below. The Baphomet symbol, we had the right hand up and the left hand down. And of course, we have the alter egos, which is part and parcel of that State Farm commercial, or at least those State Farm commercials that Chris Paul is on. For those of you who remember, right around the time that Steph Curry was first coming into prominence, he and Chris Paul did a State Farm commercial in which Chris Paul and Cliff Paul were going down the elevator or oh, pardon me, down the escalator with their children in their hands. And Steph Curry was going up the escalator the opposite way. I may have mentioned this in another video. That was the people in the know, the sponsors, the controllers, letting the viewership know that they had plans for Steph Curry in regards to his elevation. Going up the escalator is meant to be a metaphor for going up the levels of quote-unquote masonry or luciferianism. Like I had a brother ask me, what is Luciferianism? Luciferianism, all, all the term Lucifer means is the light bearer, the light bringer. Like you have a Lucifer on the left hand side, who is Cush, Nimrod, and Semiramis. You have Lucifer on the right hand side. Lucifer on the right hand side is Christ. So oftentimes people get confounded by many of these terms that are used, many of these words that are used. Um, and you, you'll find that there is a lot of mysticism when talking to people who don't know what they're talking about, they get overwhelmed by mysticism. For the most part, people who don't know what they're talking about, particularly when it comes to the Bible, their doctrines normally lean towards being overly mystical. They don't really look up words. They don't know what words mean. And that's why people get so confused. But once again, you have Lucifer on the left-hand side, who is Nimrod, Cush, and Semiramis. And you have Lucifer on the right-hand side who is Christ. He is the light bearer on the right hand side. Okay? That's why he even tells you that I am the way, the truth, and the life. In John 14 and 6. And then he comes back in John 8 and 12 and tells you that he's the light of the world. But yes, once again, Christ is referred to as the bright and morning star. Okay? Just like on the left hand side, you have that term morning star or son of the morning. Talking about Lucifer on the left hand side. So you have to understand and grasp the importance of the dichotomy of duality, the paradigm of duality. Very, very important. And that's why so many people get confused. But I'll probably be touching on these topics later on. Um, where he talk about it. The interesting thing about this is uh, we're doing a comparison between LeBron James and James Harden, their starts, their, their stats this year. Okay. And brothers, I cannot stress this enough. You must always look up things for yourself. That's why I tell you I don't make videos to tell you how to conduct yourself or how to think. I give my perspective. Now, I will tell brothers that most people are not informed. I don't speak on things unless I'm informed about them. Okay? Or at least I try not to. That's why I tell brothers if I'm incorrect, please correct me. Please correct me. But one thing that I know for a fact is that the so-called black man is the recipient of the most lies. There's no doubt about that, and there's not a close second. There's not a close second. 
And many people get frustrated when they're confronted with a truth, quote unquote, that they accepted that they are now finding out is a lie. All that is is a referendum and a test for you to figure out if you're a person of truth or if you're someone who loves lies. Many people love lies and don't even know it. And height and weight are included. Uh, That's important when it comes down to the MVP race. It's, what, it's, this <laughs> season, kidding, LeBron just, James is six eight, and James Harden is six five. You do get, you do sh you kind of shrink a little as you get older. <laughs> uh, but here's the deal: LeBron's averaging twenty seven, James Harden's averaging thirty. Mm. LeBron's averaging nine assists a game. Wow, impressive. James Harden is eight. LeBron is at eight rebounds. James Harden is at five, and the numbers are pretty comparable from there. Back and let me say this also, some people might be like, why is he talking about this on a LeBron James video? I go into different topics in my videos, okay? So that's just something that you'll have to deal with as long as you plan on being on this channel. When it's time for you to feel like you want to depart, have a wonderful life, have a great day. That's just how I present my information. Like sometimes people come to my channel and they say, how come you chime in in the middle of a video? Why don't you wait for it to finish? Because I like to do things according to stream of consciousness. I don't want to forget anything. So as soon as something jumps into the forefront of my mind, that's when I speak. That's how I do things on my channel. That's just how it is. Babcock, who do you think is your MVP? Uh, I'm going James Harden. They've been st the, the Rockets have been so good this year. James Harden's never won the award before, whereas LeBron's won a couple times. And yes, this is James Harden's year. This is the year for the Agent of Chaos, Agent 13. <laughs> I think it's James Harden this year. I want you to consider something. Yeah. If James Harden were to win the MVP this year, yeah. you would have three guys from the same squad to have gone on and become future MVPs. And that would be Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, and James Harden. That's scary. To man. have all won the MVP award. Now, really, what that is, is that is confirmation that Sam Presti is arguably the the greatest eye for talent in nba history certainly in the last 20 years i mean to be honest with you can you name another front office person that has drafted that many mvps in that short a period of time when you're talking about russell westbrick james hardhead and kevin durant you're talking about three of the top 10 players in the nba and he drafted them and they were all on the team at the same time you know, sometimes people suffer from an abundance of riches. Sometimes you can have too much talent on your team. Oftentimes you can have too much talent on your team. You really only need for a great team, you really only need three great players and a bunch of role players who love their role and a coach that knows how to administer. That truly is what makes a championship team. The problem with OKC is they had too many great players and they were all young. They were all 21, 22. It wasn't even like they were 28, 29 and mature and ready to to win a championship like that those guys were babies now what team can ever say that they right. led three mvps well, from the it, same it, team the scariest thing about that is imagine if those guys had stayed together how good they would have been how many rings they would have won amazing stuff however this year i do believe that the heart is going to make that happen it's his year for the mvp yes it is his year for the mvp but i don't know how far they would have gotten if they all stayed together because a lot of that would have been determined on West Brick. He was supposed to be the point guard. And when you truly analyze his effect on that team, um, as opposed to bringing people together, he's kind of scattered them. I think that they all like Russ as a person, but as a player, people don't want to play with him. But anyway, that's it on that video. Chris Bosh spoke the truth. I agree with him. James Harden is this year's MVP, but we'll see what happens. You never know. Peace. All right, man, peace. So I just wanted to do an epilogue for this video in order to provide some context for some of the things that I stated within the video, particularly pertaining to LeBron James and Chris Paul and Dwayne Wade. And you could throw Carmelo Anthony in there as well, but he's not as grafted in to the rest of them as they are with each other. There is certainly a Luciferian aspect to the upper crust of the NBA. There's no doubt about that. As you can see in this little still shot from one of Chris Paul's State Farm commercials, or you can call him Cliff Paul, because remember when they're under the programming as Monarch athletes or what they call Monarch butterflies, 
they are put through a systematic training where they have alter egos and they're taught to embrace their alter egos. Many of them dress in drag in their private moments. They're taught to embrace the androgynous aspect of the god that they worship, that being Pan, a.k.a. the Baphomet. And of course, one of the main symbols of the Baphomet is as above, so below. As it happens in the quote-unquote spiritual world, that is how we must make it to be in the physical world. And you can see they snuck in that hand pose with both Chris Paul and his alter ego Cliff Paul, as you can see right here, which also exhibits the mirror programming. Once again, pay very close attention to many of these commercials. They sneak a lot of things in that you're not aware of if you don't know what you're watching. But yes, Chris Paul is a Lucifer, and there's no doubt in my mind about that. And that's one of the reasons why they linked him up with his brother in Pan, that being James Harden, Agent 13, the, <laughs> the Lord of Chaos. This is another commercial that I was re referring to within the video. And I'll probably be going over many of these commercials in other videos more in depth. But I just wanted to touch on it once again for the sake of providing context. Because sometimes I just say certain things because they occur to me within the framework of whatever soliloquy or talk that I'm giving within these videos. And I feel like I need to add pictorials because it's important. As they say, pictures speak a thousand words. And as you can see here, this was another State Farm commercial. And they like to place many of their assets or soon-to-be assets within these commercials because all the athletes in the NBA are not Luciferians. They're not initiates. They're not monarch butterflies. But there are strategically placed monarch athletes within the NBA, and they quickly ascend to the height, to the top of the league because it's very important that your assets are controlled. You don't want any wild cards, any live wires who might break programming. So this commercial here exhibited what's known as predictive programming. Uh, this commercial was made back in, I believe, 2013 or 2012. At least 2013. Maybe 2014. And this was at the time when Chris Paul was considered the number one point guard in the NBA. But this commercial was meant to show the viewer... Not only that Steph Curry was going to be brought into the quote-unquote State Farm family, but that he's also under the programming, showing you the alter ego. And I've done videos on Steph Curry already. It's very obvious in many of the commercials that he does that he is an asset. But they were just going to show you here with the escalator representing the incremental steps upward in Luciferianism, or i.e. masonry, whatever you want to call it, quote-unquote, the 33 degrees representing the spinal cord or the spinal column and so you finally reach enlightenment when you hit the crown anyway in this commercial they're showing you that they had plans for Steph Curry because they showed him at the bottom of the escalator he was going to ascend and they were going to bring down Chris Paul this is around the time that they brought in Steve Kerr so yeah I believe that it was 2014 because Steve Kerr was brought in to activate Steph Curry so that he could reach the fullness of his potential. And that's what they do oftentimes with their assets. They bring in very well trained MK handlers. So that they can bring out the best in the asset. Just like they brought in Phil Jackson to make sure that Michael Jordan fulfilled his potential. Because he was the proverbial Asar or Baal. But that's a whole other video for another day. I'll be touching on Michael Jordan soon enough but yes Phil Jackson was brought in to make sure that Michael Jordan ascended to the top of the pyramid they had major plans for Jordan and they had to make sure that everything was brought to proper fruition they didn't spend all that time putting him under those layers of programming for him to just be the number one scorer in the NBA he had to carry the league through the 90s as they prepared LeBron for the 2000s and the 2010s but as you see here with Steph Curry, he starts at the bottom of the escalator, he ascends. And when you watch the commercial, which is very hard to find even on YouTube, Cliff and Chris Paul are descending on the escalator and they pass by Steph Curry and they're mesmerized. They're mesmerized because it's like him. Remember when Steph Curry came into the NBA, he was viewed as someone who everybody was rooting for because he had that underdog persona from college but he dominated college as well he came to the NBA 
and he had a series of injury issues with his ankles early on. But in the 2012 season, he was finally able to get healthy. Mark Jackson was able to bring him to a certain level, very similar to Doug Collins. But they said to themselves, when I say they, I'm talking about the elite level handlers who preside over the sports world. Um, this person is someone that we need to maximize, optimize their potential. We're going to have to send in one of our top handlers, that being Mr. Steve Kerr, who has a CIA background, allegedly. And of course, once Steve Kerr came on board, Steph Curry has been one of the top three players in the NBA. Two-time MVP, two-time world champion. And yes, as you can see, there's a reason why when you look at Chris Paul's face in this commercial, in this still shot, he has an amazed look on his face. He's like, wow, him? It's like one of those Jason Bourne movies that you see where they send some type of higher level modernized asset to go hunt down Jason Bourne and he's able to defeat them because he's just a better model. That's how they try out a lot of these top level athletes, believe it or not. And from about the 1960s onward, most of your top athletes in the three major sports have been monarch athletes, believe it or not. Pete Maravich, O.J. Simpson, Michael Jordan, and many others as well. I suspect Larry Bird, Magic Johnson. But once again, that's a whole other video for another day. But once again, just please pay very close attention to Chris Paul's expression and spatial expression. That's on purpose. These commercials are created for what's known as predictive programming. And that's why a lot of times I just laugh at a lot of these guys who come in my comments. Everything rigged. This whole thing rigged. Look, bro, it's a lot more intricate than that. It's a lot more intricate than everything rigged. A lot of these guys <laughs> that want to dumb down what's going on in professional sports, which is just a component of the overall entertainment industry, which is part and parcel of Luciferianism. They have to dumb it down and simplify it because they can't comprehend the nuance. Because it takes too much research and comprehension to comprehend the nuance. And, you know, my thing is like, if you if you believe that everything rigged, why are you clicking on the video? Why are you on the Internet? You should be off somewhere. You know, since you're so woke, you should be off somewhere in Wokeville. Get off the Internet. But anyway. Now, the female in the middle is Chris Paul's wife. I believe her name is Jada. And as you can see, tattooed over or just behind, I should say, her right shoulder is the inverted pentagram for the Baphomet. I mentioned this in the video. I made a mistake and said that it was behind her left shoulder. It's behind her right shoulder. And yes, as you can see, it is an image of the inverted pentagram. I'm sure that she or someone else will allege that it's because she's an Eastern star. And that's possible. But all Eastern stars are, are the female version of the quote-unquote Masons. They act as miniature versions of the goddess Venus. But the interesting thing is that the symbol for the mother goddess is actually the upright five-pointed star. The inverted or the downturned five-pointed star is representative of the goat head. So who knows? She may not even be an eastern star. She may just be a straight-up Luciferian. It would make sense. Seeing what I see is going on with her quote-unquote husband, Chris Paul. But that's why, again... Pay attention to what you see with these people because it's very pervasive. And that's why I stated in the video that I have little doubt myself that they're engaging in spouse swapping. When I say they, I'm talking about that little clique of LeBron and Chris Paul and D. Wade and Melo as well. Wouldn't shock me at all. Most of these so-called marriages are nothing but facades. D. Wade and LeBron, that's why you always hear their names popping up all over the Internet they're trying to slide into some model's DMs and all that other shit. Their wives know about it. They don't care. Their wives go and they take their little trips to the Virgin Islands or to Cancun. And they allow some strange guy to, to dig them out. And they go back and kiss LeBron or D-Wade on their lips. They don't care. And once again, those guys at the elite level, at the highest levels in the sports world are pansexuals. They're dealing with everything. Women, men, etc. A lot of people might not like me saying that. It is what it is. Okay, it is what it is. And yes, they do wife swap and their women are pansexuals as well, believe it or not. They have to engage in those rituals in order to be allowed 
to ascend to the highest levels. That's part and parcel to the adherence of many of the Kabbalah rituals. It's one of the main things that they are forced to embrace is pansexuality, their inner homosexual or lesbian side. Oh, and before I move off of this photo, the female standing right behind Chris Paul's wife is Miss Gloria Govan. The, uh, the proverbial Helen of Troy, it seems like. I mean, she's just got all type of dudes fighting over her. Derek Fisher, her baby daddy, Matt Barnes. And as someone noted in one of the previous videos that I did, I believe that it was the video that I did on Rihanna and how she seems to be so infatuated with LeBron. This was during last year's NBA Finals. Someone told me in the comments that Gloria Govan has a series of tattoos on her body and that she herself stated that she was molested as a child. Why is that? Because she's another monarch butterfly thrown into the industry. 90 to 95 percent of those females that you see on these reality shows, these real housewives and hip hop Atlanta, all these little silly bullshit shows. That's that is a method that they use to introduce the new monarch butterflies that you're going to be hearing about and reading about and whose music you're going to be listening to for the next 15 years. Like, you know, you had Nicki Minaj five years ago. She was the hot thing. Now it's this bro Cardi B. As they have Cardi B making her quote unquote music, they're already prepping the next chick who's going to replace Cardi B. As you listen to Cardi B's music, they have a new chick that they're currently prepping. When I say prepping, I mean putting through the electroshock treatment, the LSD, the mind control, making sure that she's a proper mentoring candidate, that she recognizes all her alters, that she can quote unquote spit everything that's written for her properly, that she has her imagery down packed. They're prepping that person right now as you listen to Cardi B. That's how that works. So now this was a very interesting photo when I saw it. Of course, they're on a red carpet. And as you can see, Mr. Chris Paul, he has on the leopard print jumpsuit here. And I wasn't going to make too big a deal about it, even though it's always notable to me when I see a celebrity in leopard print. Because that normally denotes that they're beta program, meaning what? They have a sex altar that was implanted within them at some point. Some people might say, when does this stuff happen? How do you know about this stuff? You have to understand something. Many of these assets are raised in the programming or they reach a point where they get to the NBA or to the NFL or Major League Baseball or what have you or to the elite level as a boxer or golfer and their house is broken into and they're kidnapped and they're taken to a location and they're put under the programming and then they're just dropped right back off. This is what they show you in films like Get Out. Or there was a film that Denzel Washington did back in the early, early 90s called Ricochet. And they were showing you what they do to these celebrities from back then. But people just didn't understand what they were watching. Go watch the movie Ricochet. It tells you about a district attorney played by Denzel Washington who put away a criminal by the name of... I'm trying to remember what his name was. But it was played by the actor John Lithgow. Denzel Washington played the district attorney. And he rose to fame... Because as a cop, he made an arrest on John Lithgow's character. And because of that, he systematically rose through the police force, became a district attorney. John Lithgow followed his career and was resentful. He broke out of prison, kidnapped Denzel's character, and basically put him under a form of mind control and set him up, drugged him, created a tape that would embarrass him so that he would stay in line. This is what's done to many of these celebrities as well. To force them to submit to the programming, force them to stay in line. They'll film them in compromising positions. Maybe they were drugged and they'll have a homosexual come and rape them while they're in an incapacitated state. Record it and tell them this is what we'll reveal about you if you don't stay in line. Things of that nature. Go back to the former musician from the 1970s, Donnie Hathaway. He was trying to act as a whistleblower to what was going on in the entertainment industry from back then. They threw him out a window. Okay? So this stuff is very real. But I noticed this outfit that Chris Paul had on, and it was a red flag for me. 
Now, this is another photo of Chris Paul with the leopard print or the cheetah print, whatever this is. And I'm guessing that this is at the BET Awards. I know one of these little silly awards that <laughs> cats love to go to. But you see him here with, with his wife, uh, Jada. And once again, he has on the animal print. When I saw this photo, it cemented to me what I suspected in the previous photo, which is that he has a beta programmed altar installed within him. And it makes sense because he's rolling with LeBron, he's rolling with D. Wade. They all worship Baal. And that's why in the State Farm commercial, they had him doing the as above, so below pose. Okay? Many of these people are altars. If I be a betting man, the script for the NBA season is for the Rockets to win the championship. If the Warriors are able to transcend that, they can. And that's another thing. People have to understand, yes, there's a certain way that they want the season to transpire. They like storylines. But certain teams are able to transcend the storyline. If they're able to transcend the storyline, great. Go watch the movie Hunger Games. I brought this up before. It's very similar to that. They really want all the contestants to die in the movie Hunger Games, but you have people who are able to transcend that, so you bring them back. That's how professional sports is. Yes, the referees may guide the game a certain way. If you can transcend it, then you can. We've, we've seen that with teams in the past. The Bad Boy Pistons in 89 and 90, the, uh, the Pistons in 04, they were not supposed to win. But they just outplayed the Lakers that badly. Made them look that bad. So, I mean, it happens. But these guys, are, you know, every aspect of every game is, is rigged. Like, you know, all 13 guys on both teams, both NBA teams are holding a dance recital. Like, it's just silly. But there are monarch athletes throughout the NBA. No doubt about it. This is another photo at the same event. Just from a different angle, a little farther away. And you can see once again that Chris Paul, he does have on the animal print. His wife, she also has on a shirt that appears to have the image of a big cat on the front of it. Let me see if I can do a close-up. Yes, it looks like some type of tiger or maybe snow leopard. Something like that on the front of her shirt. That would denote that she's under the programming as well. Or that image is used to keep Chris under control. As I've told you in the Steph Curry videos that I've done. Many of these athletes' wives are their handlers, believe it or not. Many of these athletes' wives are their handlers. Once again, think of the film Get Out. They had their bodies used to house the brains of Caucasians. And their conscious minds were subverted into an inner holding cell basically known as the sunken place and whenever they would try to rise out of it you had the female psychotherapist who would subdue them again that is who many of these players wives are believe it or not that's why that uh drake did the mock-up of steph curry at the nba awards last year where i did the video of it if you look it up it's on my channel i can't remember the name of it just just search steph curry it'll come up but they put it right in front of you in plain sight to let you know what's really going on. Steph Curry is definitely a monarch athlete. Um, we can see that from the commercials that he's in. We can also see it by much of his play. The way that he performed in Game 3 in 2016 in the finals against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Game 3, when Golden State was up 2-0 and he was nowhere to be found in Game 3, he was sitting on the bench looking like a zombie. I have no doubt that his switch was turned off. All right, so now this is going to be the last photo that I'll go through. And this is what I was speaking about in the video. Chris Paul was photoed out on a date with LeBron James's wife. Why is that? Could it be because they have an agreement as a quote-unquote brotherhood that they're going to wife share? That they're going to wife swap? I'm sorry. I don't care how close a homeboy you are of mine. You ain't taking my woman out on no damn date, dude. I mean, give me a fucking break. But there's definitely something rotten in Denmark going on in, in that little brotherhood. Okay, there's no doubt in my mind about that. There's little doubt in my mind about that. And it's never fully 
explained exactly what they were doing out. But just to add some context, there was an article written on the night that they were spotted out. So let's see what it says. Now, this is on the website Black Cosmo. It took me a while to find this photo because I remember when it first occurred. And I had to look it up because like I state constantly, I like to provide context for my statements. So people just don't think I sit here and just make shit up. I don't have to do that. But it's on the website Black Cosmo. Look at the title of the article. They wrote this. I didn't write this. They wrote this. NBA star Chris Paul had a dinner date with LeBron James' wife. This took place on December 5th, 2016. Here goes your boy Chris Paul. They go LeBron James' wife. Same photo that we just saw. Oh boy, here, here goes some stupid ass thotties popping up. Every time something gets serious, them thotties gotta pop up. Here it goes. Chris Paul arrived last night at LA's hot spot catch and he wasn't alone. The paparazzi pics showed him arriving at the event with LeBron James' wife Savannah. They were both very well dressed and looked happy. Savannah has been holding down her husband James forever. They met when she was 16 and they had their first child while they were still in high school. They had another son in 2007. James didn't propose until 2011. Yeah, she made him propose. Because if he didn't propose and marry her, she was going to move back to Akron, Ohio, when she was going to ruin the image that he was carefully trying to cultivate as a family man. Which is not the truth. I mean, that's his business. But he was trying to cultivate the image of a family man. So that he would be a bigger asset for Nike. Because those are his sponsors. They tell him what to do. All that spiel that LeBron James likes to, likes to talk about politics and um, the government and Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump doesn't give a fuck about the people. All that stuff is a big act. LeBron is a politician his damn self. But it is what it is. That's his business. He uses that image to make money. Am I saying that he doesn't really care about so-called black people or people from Akron or Ohio? No, I'm not saying that. But a lot of his image is fluff. And he's willing to go along with a lot of misdirection tactics and a lot of shenanigans to up his profile. For example, the spraying of the word nigger on his front gate and alleging that racist people did it when in fact he was in on it. That, that was a real hoax for those of you who don't know. And to this day, we haven't found out who the hell sprayed his front gate because it was a big lie. That's why I wanted him to go on the Chick Laura Ingram show. But I knew he would never do it because, come on, LeBron's about as deep as a damn puddle. I mean, he makes Colin Kaepernick look like Malcolm X in regards to depth of thought. Here we go, more silly pop-ups. Every time we get in the zone, another pop-up, pop-up. <laughs> says James didn't propose until 2011 and then they married in 2013. They had their daughter a year later. Oh, there go another photo. There they go. Out on a date. She got some tight black leather pants on too. Savannah looks like Savannah looks like the type that LeBron had to warm her up to the idea of the whole wife swapping thing. And then she just got into it, just said, you know what, I'm just gonna <laughs> be free. <laughs> He's doing him. I'm gonna do me. Yep, yeah, but there's no real explanation for what occurred that night. But I don't really need one because all you got to do is look at their circle. Carmelo Anthony and Lala. They've been known to do their thing. Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union. They've been known to do their thing. Uh, Chris Paul and Jada Paul. They have kind of flown under the radar. But as I've already shown in this video, they're doing their thing. You can believe that because they definitely have some nefarious affiliations there's no doubt and lebron james we've already been over his issues he certainly is a worshiper a venerator of baal so point being is this you have to be very wary of who you put on a pedestal because many of these people are being controlled in one way or another all right and this is mostly focused on many of you brothers who understand to a degree what's going on around you. For the people who really don't, they probably watch a video like this and be like, what the hell is this guy talking about? And that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. 
point being is that there's layers to everything in life, brothers. Don't always believe what you see on the outside layer. But anyway, peace.